Southeast Texas Weekly, brought to you by the Modern Vein Surgery Institute at Privity Clinic for Surgical Care. Welcome back to Sally Texas Weekly. I'm Kevin Steele. So great to have you with us to talk politics on this occasion. Joining me to do so, U.S. Congressman uh, and one of the best guys you'll ever want to meet, Steve Stockman, uh, the 36th Congressional District Leader for our area. You've got an area stretching from the Sabine River all the way down to, I don't know, Pearland and Way, way, well, not Pearland, but we have Clear Lake up go, to Baytown. You go way out there. Yeah. All and right. We have nine, nine counties. It's a big, big district. Yeah. Uh, your work is cut out for you. Well, I appreciate you coming by because we want to ask some crucial questions on news that just came in today, taping on Friday, where we're learning from the Hill newspaper that uh, essentially we are beginning to see movement in the House on the immigration reform bill, a key measure that has been uh, argued long and hard. The Senate passed it. Some said it was dead on arrival in the U.S. House, not so evidently uh, with Representative Luis Gutierrez. Let's take our full screen so we can uh, show people what we're talking about precisely. Representative Luis Gutierrez, the Democrat from Illinois, telling the Hill newspaper, I am not going to tell you the names of some of them Republicans because some of them I've spoken to and they've said I'd love to do the activity with you. I want to be able to vote for it, goes on to say, I really don't need to draw attention to myself. Republicans, 40 to 50 of them evidently, don't necessarily want to draw attention to themselves, but they say they are willing to pass this. Do you support passage of the immigration reform bill in its current state? No, absolutely not. It's, it's, a, it's an amnesty bill. It's nothing more than the amnesty bill. And by the way, the gentleman that said that is a Democrat. He's also Hispanic, so he's hopeful uh -huh, for it. Uh -huh. A little bit of wishful thinking, I think, on his part. You, you don't like the, the, the border security aspect of this. You don't believe well, there's, no, there's not any border security. A lot of people don't know that uh, the most of the federal lands, mm -hmm. they added 20,000, uh, which, by the way, they said it's going to take 20 years to add 20,000 border security. Uh, a lot of the federal lands, which is, is on the border, is there's 17 EPA environmental regulations that keep people from patrolling that area. Mm -hmm. So even if we had 100,000, there's large, vast swaths of land that we can't patrol. Just, just can't get there. So mm -hmm. the, the, and, and this maybe is what happened back in the 80s. Uh, when there was actually a Reagan uh, right. passed, you know, supported. Uh, Which he said was his greatest mistake. Plan. He said, it, he said yeah. it was his greatest mistake. There wasn't a great deal of enforcement that was increased there. The border continued but it was to promised. be porous. Mm -hmm. It was promised at that time, and yeah. in your view, not delivered? No, that's why I think we need to do the border security that was promised in the 80s. Uh, we need to step up the plate to do it. And Mike McCall is putting out a border security plan. He's also the chairman of the, of the committee, and he's from Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he's going to put out a strong plan for border security. Before we do anything else, we must secure our borders. Among your priorities has been this matter of really coming to terms in this administration with what in the world happened at Benghazi. How safe are our diplomatic missions around the globe? You have brought it to the front. Why must Benghazi be held at the forefront of the national conversation so long after it happened? Well, it's going to be a year in September 11th. Uh, it was uh, a tragedy in which four Americans were murdered. We don't want that to happen again in other embassies. Uh, currently, the administration is being more sensitive about that. That's why they pulled out 21 missions. Mm -hmm. And then they also pulled out of Pakistan today. Uh, so the fact is that we, we don't want to repeat the mistakes. And the way we do that is by investigating and getting to the bottom of it and seeing why, why there's so much, uh, quite frankly, stalling. We've had two committee hearings in which the witnesses were intimidated and didn't show up. And you actually have been at the forefront of all of this in Washington because just now we're beginning to see some, uh, like uh, Senator Kelly Ayotte from New Hampshire, coming forward to say what is going on, that the Justice Department now has an idea of four suspects that they want to get. Her walking, walking around. Free. They're walking yeah, they're walking around. They, they go to their house every day and, and they live uh, just the way they always have. They do this. television interviews. That's right, yeah. And these and people really are seriously uh, considered suspects that the Justice Department wants to get. But they're walking around free and no, uh, the Lib we, we, we spent billions, did we not, in protecting uh, uh, the Libyan civilians. Uh, and, and overthrow Gaddafi. We mm -hmm. help overthrow Gaddafi. Yet the current government's not willing to work with us. It's, it's a horrible situation. But more importantly, we haven't had heard uh, firsthand accounts from the witnesses that were there. They're being barred from being te uh, to, to be allowed to testify. You have had strong views on the IRS scandal that has emerged. Tell us about your, your view. Even now, it's beginning to change. We're uh, evidently beginning to see reports of yet more uh, targeting of conservative groups uh, on the part of the IRS. Yeah, our friends say, well, they're targeting the left, too, but every one that they target got their approval. 
There's still many uh, conservative groups that have not got their approval. They were also asked about their religious beliefs, what they're reading, their database, their donors, wholly outside, and now we found out they broke the law, the IRS broke the law by giving information to the Federal Election Commission really breaking many laws, of, or, of the IRS is stepping on the line. That's one reason why I think she took the fifth in uh -huh. the hearing. House conservatives have said Obamacare is a mess. Is it a mess? And at this late stage of the game, is it really possible to defund Obamacare? Is it past, uh, is it past the, the general political momentum of Washington to stop it at this point? Well, we're not, we're not the Republicans aren't the ones that says it's messed up, actually. We do agree with the Teamsters, though, who say it's messed up, <laughs> and it's going to affect their members in a great way. And we can defund it by just not supplying the money. In fact, I introduced a bill called Keep the Government Open, which keeps supplies all the money to every agency except for Obamacare. You, you really believe we can be defunded at this point? Yeah, it's the House's prerogative. It's the Constitution. We, we in the House decide where the money goes, not the, the Senate. Right. right. And uh, we can do it. It's just whether we have the courage. There, there's a lot of nervous that we'll get blamed for the shutdown. Well, I was in Congress at the time that shut down, and we never shut the government down. Mm -hmm. It was the president who vetoed the bill to keep it open. That'll be the fight for the fall. That's right. I guess we'll talk about that Thanks. then. <laughs> Congressman Steve Stockman, 36th Congressional District, thanks for joining us. We're back in just moments to talk with some of our state leaders right after this.